If you have the Fly-By-Wire A320NX, you want to watch this video. Hello YouTube, I'm Pilot Stud and welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. Now recently on September the 18th, which is today on the day of filming, the Fly-By-Wire team are released the A320NX version 0 0.70. Now this is the stable release, so if you use the development and experimental version, you may not get as much out of this video as those who use the stable version might get. In today's video, I'll be going through the main changes, the new features, and whether or not it's worth it, or if you should just stick with the development or experimental version. If you're new know around here, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm also running a charity fundraiser, raising money for two awesome charities. But now, let's hop into the cockpit and talk about this recent development. So here we are in the cockpit of the A320NX. To install this update, all you need to do is download the Fly-By-Wire installer if you have not already. Select Stable and you should see um, the yellow Update button. Click it, it takes a few seconds, up to a few minutes to install. Make sure your sim is away and hey presto, you've got it in the sim. Now for those of you who are used to the development or experimental version, you may not see many differences moving over to the stable version because of course most of the features came over from there but what I've seen and what you may see is certainly FPS improvements which probably means I'll be using this stable version for quite some time until we get some new features out. The first thing you guys will notice even before you turn anything on is the new textures within the cockpit. You can clearly see comparing it to the previous stable version, 0.6, the cockpit looks a lot more realistic with notable wear and tear. There's plenty of stuff to talk about so I sum it up to the main points in this video today. The full change log is on the link in the description, you can also get it on the installer. Leave your thoughts and experiences down below, I'd love to hear them. So first of all we're going to get this aircraft set up, so let's go over to the overhead panel, you can see the F performance at the moment is really good, we'll get battery on and external power on, there we go. As that's doing that we'll just talk about some of the first changes, so most notably it's clear that new textures have been brought along, the aircraft does look a lot more realistic. On top of that, sounds. Sounds have been completely remodelled. We've now got a 100% custom sound pack, improving the entire soundscape inside and outside, with 3D sounds even be being affected by stuff like closing the cockpit door, which I think is incredibly impressive. Of course, a lot of these features I'm relatively used to, but the fact that it's now on the stable version means there's an incredibly low risk of having bugs or FPS loss is really impressive and the fly-by-wire team consistently blow me away. Now I'm just going to talk as we get this aircraft set up and just going through stuff like the MCDU, although I'm not getting a flight plan loaded in today just to talk about um, the aircraft. The main point of this update was to bring over the entirely new and custom fly-by-wire autopilot and autothrust systems which have been written from the ground up. Notably, the new autothrust system has the ability to be calibrated which when you start up the fly pad you'll see you can come down into settings, come down into sim options and then you can calibrate your throttle detents. This works in correlation with Auto Thrust, which has had a big boost. The avionics have been entirely improved. We'll talk about it more in depth at the, in a minute, but the gist is that they've made them a lot more customizable, a lot more realistic, in the term that they are now not just on their own. A variety of systems work together in order to function. This means they have the ability to fail to a much more higher degree of accuracy. For example, if we come to the overhead panel and turn off AD 1, 2 and 3, I said that the wrong way around, you'll see on the primary flight display we now lose all of our data, of course, coming from the air data reference. This has the ability to fail if you set it up through the fly pad and shows 
Flubber wires attention to detail before on the previous stable version we of course did not have that, certainly not on the default version of the A320. Let's get that back on and then we'll talk a bit more. So aside from the entirely reworked cockpit texturing, the massive overhaul to the avionics system which includes more accurate symbology and improved frame rates as I've already said, we've seen a completely new fly-by-wire iPad. Now this flypad is on version 2 now and while it's not perfect as you can see we seem to have some sort of bug here. That goes away when I zoom in apparently. You can see it's got an entirely new layout including now Navigraph compatibility. If I put Echo Gob Sierra Sierra in, which is the airport we're at at the moment, you can see if you've got Navigraph Simlink open, it loads in all your charts from Navigraph. Now you do have to have an active kind of subscription which does cost money but I do really think it's worth it. I've got to be honest, I don't like having it on the iPad necessarily, I prefer to print it off, it just makes things a lot easier for me. But it's nice that it's there, put any airport in and it will come up if we go. KJFK, you can see, loads in straight away. Now we've got the, uh, the Cameron 4 arrival to... JFK. It's a really impressive update and there's still plenty of stuff to talk about. Now if you have the development or experimental version you may not be so interested and I've got to be honest if you're not experiencing many issues you might as well stay with them. You will be familiar with many of these systems but in my opinion moving over to, to the stable version of course provides a much more stable experience which I think can be attractive to many. Continuing with cockpit rework you can see we've now got pixelation on the primary float display and in fact most of the displays in the aircraft. I think that's something really impressive and although you see it to a greater extent when you're flying up in the air and all these kind of displays are moving I do think this attention to detail is really paywear level in fact I've got to be honest the fly wire A320 NX could have been payware a long time ago and I would have brought it the systems throughout the aircraft have had a massive overhaul, but it doesn't mean the outside has been ignored. Of course, that fully custom soundscape brings over new sounds to the outside of the aircraft, and it really does sound beautiful, although I've got to be honest, I can't tell the difference because I'm so used to the development version, which has all of these features anyway. The custom autopilot system might take a bit of adjustment, but I've been using it for a while, and I really think it's much more easier to use as it's more stable, follows your commands more as it's more akin to the real thing. The flight model has also seen a big improvement in compatibility with the autopilot and the aircraft as a whole. And many of those famous Airbus features have been integrated to a high degree of accuracy with new high angle of attack and high speed protection systems being implemented which I've got to be honest when it first came out on the development version was quite annoying because it meant that if we were over speeding autopilot would disengage or I should say if we were flying into heavy wind autopilot would disengage and it could be a bit funny but now I've gotten used to it it seems to be alright. In terms of external lighting they're all now, comp they're all now powered by their correct electrical buses which means once again they have the ability to fail to a higher extent if you don't turn it on right or if you don't start up correctly. Same with brakes, they've got kind of a middleman now, they're now connected to the hydraulic system so if that fails you're getting no brakes. Speaking of brakes, they've also got new sounds which you'll hear especially on landing when the auto brakes uh, deploy. And of course, as I touched on failures there, you can now enable some failures from the fly pad. It's really easy to install, as I've already said. Just click the yellow update button, or I think there's a purple install button. And Bob's your uncle, it's right in there. Fly by wire have once again done it, absolutely awesome. Anyway guys, I'm going to end this video here, I hope it's helped you. I do recommend you install the stable version, or at least update to the stable version 0.7 if you haven't already. It's really worth it, and there's so many features I haven't touched on on this video, I've just tried to get to most of them. Anyway, from me today, thank you so much for watching, thank you to my first class channel members, thank you to O1K, Captain Matt Russell, Jesse Wiseman, Ethan Bubeck and Simon Schmidt, you guys really do help me out, but for me today, that is all, I'll see you soon, bye bye.